Hello again, everyone. I hope you're doing well on this Wednesday. It is a great pleasure to be joined by the pride of Boneyville, Alberta, the one and only Tanner, the bulldozer Bozer, who's kind enough to join us just a few days before his next fight. He fought on June 27th in Las Vegas. He's now fighting on the final Fight Island card this Saturday against Rafael Pessoa. And I've been trying to track him down for quite some time. Wanted to talk to my fellow Canadian. And now here he is in the flesh in Abu Dhabi. Tanner, thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Hey, yeah, uh, thanks for having me on. Also, it's pronounced Bonnieville, so I'm just going to correct you now. Oh, my gosh. I am so embarrassed. The disrespect. So, yes, uh, I should have known that. Okay, so Bonnieville, Alberta. Uh, could you yeah. tell me what Bonnieville, Alberta is like? I've never had the pleasure. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't uh, make sense if you had. It's a town of between five to 7,000. Fuck my phone. Uh, it's a town between five to 7,000 in Alberta. It's an oil field town. How, it. so and and how long did you uh did you live there i grew up there so i lived there my whole life i moved to uh edmonton area when i was um 21 oh why did you move to train mma okay but uh, my understanding is early on in your life uh, you actually wanted to be an emt correct that no that was later uh, i already had um seven pro fights i think when i went and got my emr course I just was sick of being broke, so I wanted to get a real job. But um, after being in school for the EMR course only took me about a month. Uh, but to get EMT, I would have had to be in school for like six months. And that was, I just couldn't fathom doing it. So I just called uh, a local promoter again. I was like, man, just book me another fight. Who introduced you to martial arts? I did karate growing up. So I did karate from when I was 11 to when I was about 19. And um my interest, I guess, kind of grew from there. Okay. Um, and, and things are going well for you now in the UFC. Of course, as I said, we, we saw you June 27th, uh, got that big win, impressive win over Felipe Lenz. And now here you are returning. Um, and it's been quite the month from you. My understanding is, of course, going back to Canada, you had to do the 14-day quarantine. In the midst of that quarantine, you were offered a fight against Marcin Tybora at UFC 251, but you couldn't leave the country because you were in the midst of the quarantine. And then they offered you this fight as well. Um, and so is it accurate to say that you went essentially from the quarantine to just a couple of days of training to then back to Las Vegas to fly out to Abu Dhabi? Yeah, it's completely accurate. I had three days in the gym before I had to fly out. So I went as hard as I could in three days and just tried to open my lungs back up and, um, try and whip my body back into shape real quick and flew out. What kind of shape were you in after 14 days inside your house? <laughs> Uh, well, I was in the best shape of my life two weeks before that. So however far you can get away from that in two weeks of uh, eating and drinking, that's how far away I was. And they're very strict over there, right? Like you, you literally cannot leave your house. Well, yeah. If you, well, if you do, you could, and get caught, you could face uh, like pretty big fines in jail time. Right. I heard it's something like $750,000. It can um, be, it can be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and any reservations about taking the fight because of the, uh, the circumstances? No, it's it's a back to back payday. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I also got a new contract kind of on the heels of accepting this fight. So it's really worth it no matter what. How many fights did you have left on your previous deal? One. Okay, so this would not have been your last one. So they re up to you. Are you happy with the new deal? Yeah. Were you were you looking to test the market? Or did you feel like this no. is a place that you wanted to be? Yeah, this is where I wanted to be. I don't think anybody would have paid me more. So I just wanted to get more than I was getting. And I did. So I'm, I'm happy with my new contract. And now I just got to win more than I lose. Right. Uh, and and would you would you say after a fight like the one that you had back in uh, in late June in Las Vegas, that your confidence is a little higher than than maybe in the past? Are you feeling that you're getting a lot of attention? It was a great knockout, some buzz around you. How would you describe the confidence right now? my confidence is no different than normal. Um, I'm always ready to fight. And just, just because you come off of a, a highlight real win, like that was probably my most awesome looking win of my career, but you can't buy into the hype. Everybody thinks you're awesome for two seconds, but the next time I go back to winning a decision, everybody's going to say I suck. So I'm really not worried about um, people's opinions coming off that, even though they were positive, you still have to take everything with a grain of salt. You strike me as a very sort of no nonsense kind of guy. You don't you don't get too high, you don't get too low. Is that is that a fair assessment? Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's just like you cuz cuz like you have this uh you have a look that is very sort of like loving Canadian guy, but you're like very you're very like to the point. 
no, no beating around the bush. You tell it like it is. Yeah, I'll take that. Sure. Yeah. It was a compliment. Um, well, I remember when you were asked, uh, I think it was James Lynch who asked you about the Alexander Gustafson uh, uh, against Fabricio Verdum fight. And you had a, a little bit of a, of a rant, a reaction to it, saying that it was a cupcake fight for Alexander Gustafson. Now here you are fighting on the same card. I'm wondering if you saw um, Mr. Verdum and you were able to uh, size him up and see if he's in better shape than the last time he fought. Yeah, no, I saw Verdum. Look, Verdum is a legend, man. I didn't shake his hand. I didn't meet him. Um, Verdum doesn't know who I am and he shouldn't. He looks like he's in shape. It's, it's not like he looked like he was in poor shape last time or something. It's just, I think he's over the hill, but whatever, I guess we're going to see. We all have to see, we all have to see if me taking this fight in, in a week and a half notice was stupid. And we have to see if, if, uh, Verdum is going to look better this time around. We all have to see that's coming up in just a few days. Tanner, yesterday on social media, you mentioned that uh, you have lost your shorts, your 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 old shorts, not the shorts that you wear in the UFC. Could you tell us what happened and what's the the status of these shorts? Yeah, no, they they were my UFC shorts. They were shorts that I'd worn in a previous UFC fight. Okay, and where are they at now? I don't know. I, I gave um, just two two things to be washed by the hotel staff. During our two day quarantine, we were allowed two articles of clothing to be washed per day. So I decided to follow that rule and I gave one rash guard that's really not a big deal and those shorts and they're just gone. So I've called the office and talked to them and they insist they put them in my room, but they didn't. They came and looked and they're puzzled. So they obviously just put them in the wrong room. But someone from the UFC team uh, yesterday was like, saw someone wearing a pair of Bozer shorts, which is super weird. And I was like, so I don't know, I don't know who it is, but there is someone here who just found them in their closet and is just wearing them around, which is kind of funny, but f- that guy. Do, do these shorts mean something to you other than you've had them for a while? Like, is there a sentimental attachment to them? And not overly like <laughs> fight worn shorts are good though, because after a while, whenever they get a hole in them, which doesn't take that that long, I usually would sign them and give them to like a sponsor to put up or something like that. Cause you know, they were worn in a fight. So yeah, I would like to have them, but I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Um, so he- here you are in this situation where um, you get a fight, you know, in, in essentially a month. Um, and I know, you know, two fights in essentially a month. And I know that in your in your past, this is something that you're kind of used to, right? Like when you used to fight for ACB, you used to get short notice fights all the time. Is it almost better for you to have that so you don't overthink things, that you don't overtrain? Like, are you one of those? Because I've seen fighters in the past who actually like short notice fights better than long training camps. Are you one of those guys as well? Um, I'm not an overthinker ever, so it doesn't <laughs> affect me in that way. And as for uh, overtraining, my coaches, my coaches know what to do and I just trust them. So I, I won't go out of my way and go overtrain myself. I just follow what my coaches um, have me do. So I don't think it's an advantage, but it's, I'm, I'm good with it and I'm good for it. You know, I'm, this is no, I'm no stranger to this kind of thing. I'm uh, I'm pretty all terrain, you know, I can go and change my sleep pattern and uh, fight on short notice and I'm going to be just fine. How did you lose your tooth? Long, uh, it's a long story and it's not glorious. It's not a good story? No. It's a big part of who you are, I feel. No, I'm not going to tell you. All right. What about the hair? What's the inspiration behind it? Um, I just had a mullet for most of my life. There's not really a specific thing. It's just I've pretty much always had it. Okay. Um, and do, do you feel like people like you because you have a mullet? Yeah, people think it's funny. So people get on your... Um, get on social media all the time. And I mean, I hear big country like a, a thousand times a fight and I have since I started because he was a uh, first guy to be famous for it, I guess, but it's just my style. I just like it. I'm not trying to copy anybody. Does it bother you that people think it's funny? No, not really. I don't care. I okay. get it. Like, I mean, I like to think my mullet's pretty stylish. I don't think that I got a dirty one, you know? Right. I know, of course. Um, and, and, and what about you and Maurice Screen? Could you tell us the, I know you, you referenced it in the uh, post-fight interview, but uh, could you tell us about that? Because the one part that kind of jumped out at me was you guys were drinking beers like a couple of days before the fight. Oh, I wasn't. Oh, he was. Um, 
I, he came up to me at the pool and look, Maurice Green's a nice guy. I don't think that he's a, he's a dick or anything like that. He came up to me and he introduced himself and hey, Maurice Green. I'm like, I know who you are. And he's like, yeah, well, we were supposed to fight, weren't we? And I was like, well, kind of, you turned me down. Oh yeah. I wanted a top 15 opponent at the time. Well, I could have had an extra fight is the way I look at it. I could have had a fight last August instead of debuting in October. And, uh, the reason I didn't is because Maurice Green wanted a higher ranked opponent. So yeah, Maurice Green's a nice guy, but still for that. And I swear to God, man, if I find out that Maurice Green is the guy behind my stolen shorts, I'm going to lose my mind. You feel like he might be. <laughs> I don't know how, but I mean, something's telling me, you know, uh, is, is that the fight that you want next? Cause didn't you say fight Island, you win, he wins. You both did win. You wanted to fight him on fight Island. It didn't materialize yeah. though. Um, he did have a cut after his fight. So he, I don't mm -hmm. think he would have been eligible to fight on fight Island anyways. Uh, yeah. I mean, I would obviously take that fight next, but as you're seeing now, I'll pretty much take any fight next. So whatever. What do you know about Rafael? Um, I've watched his most recent fights. He's, uh, he's, he hits hard. He's, he's a bigger guy. He strikes, he prefers to strike, but he's wild. Um, like every Brazilian in the world, he's a jujitsu black belt. He was born with it probably. And, um, I think he's, um, he's a dangerous enough guy everywhere. And I just got to keep my head on a swivel and be cautious of certain things. But, you know, I think it's, I think it's my fight to lose, but again, we're going to see. Uh, wanted to ask you about something. Cause uh, a lot of UFC fans are just learning, a lot about you now, finding out a lot about who you are. Um, I saw a story about, um, and, and if you don't feel comfortable talking about it, I understand. Uh, was a coach of yours murdered earlier this year and the, and the case is still open? Did that happen? A BJJ coach of yours? Yeah, he was my first jujitsu coach back when I still lived in Bonneville before I moved to Edmonton. He was murdered a few months ago in Glendon, Alberta, which is about 20 minutes outside of Bonneville. Uh, they have two people in custody and um, I, I don't think that they've been sentenced yet, but they're in the process of that. And it looks like the, the prosecution is going to be able to get them. So, yeah, it's extremely tragic. You know, he's a, a good man and had a wife and three kids. So it's extremely sad circumstances. What were the circumstances surrounding his death? He, well, him and his uncle were both shot and they were they were out hunting. Uh, they, I think they got a moose and they, they got shot, just killed at an intersection by Glendon. And I don't know any, uh, anything beyond that. I don't know if anybody does besides the investigators and, and maybe his wife or something. Were you guys still very close till this day? Well, he's my friend. I mean, I, I don't, I hadn't trained with him in a long time. Like I have my coaches now. Yeah. Um, but I mean, he's still, yeah, he's still a friend of mine. I, we didn't talk all the time, but it's, it's sad. But like, I, and I've said this before, you know, his, his murder, you know, it's not about me. Like he has a family and he has people that he is extremely close with now. He has a wife and kids, man. Like, yeah, he was my jujitsu coach a long time ago, but um, that it's, it's, it's tragic and people shouldn't, try and make it like he was, you know, Tanner Bose's jujitsu coach, you know, it was an innocent man and his um, uncle, another innocent man who were murdered for as best as anybody can tell no reason. Right. I, I appreciate that. And I understand that. Um, I wanted to just ask you about the Canadian fight scene as well, because it seemed like maybe 10 or so years ago, it was a thriving fight scene. You had multiple regional promotions, you know, you had MFC, you had the score fighting series, TKO was doing a lot more. And of course, a lot of fighters from Canada coming out and, uh, you know, succeeding and thriving in the UFC. These days, it's not quite the same, not as many regional promotions in Canada, not, not as many fights for Canadians um, in, in their home country. Why do you think it has uh, turned out this way? And do you foresee it changing going back to, you know, the glory days of 10 or so years ago? Hmm. I don't know why there's not as many MMA promotions. I don't know if it's harder to sell tickets now. Uh, Unified MMA is a big one in Canada and it's, it's primarily, well, out, it's out of Edmonton. Uh, it does really well. It's one of the biggest ones in Canada now. And then TKO is still um, going strong in uh, Quebec. 
Uh, but yeah, there's not a ton. I mean, you have some local ones out of BC and a couple other small ones out of Alberta and another one or two small ones, maybe in Quebec, but, uh, I don't, I don't know why I, I really don't, but there's always places to fight as long as guys are willing to take the fights. So, although of course there, it was nice to have a more booming scene before, I don't think that it's dried up and dead or anything like that. It's just that, I mean, right now it is because of COVID and nobody's allowed to have shows, but as soon as they're allowed um, to restart again, things are going to get back up and running and it's, it's going to be all right. Is it harder for you as a Canadian to get fights right now because of COVID or is it just a matter of adhering to that 14 day quarantine? Well, for me, I can fight. I'm in UFC, so I can fight for everybody else. It's impossible. Mm. There's no other fights you can, there's nothing, nothing that's allowed to happen. Okay. Um, and, and uh, my understanding is you were introduced to the UFC uh, via watching the fights with your dad, right? Yeah. Who was your first favorite guy back in the day? Um, I, I probably followed my dad, like my first favorite guy. I probably liked Tito Ortiz or Randy Couture. Uh, oh, wow. My dad liked Randy Couture a lot. So I, I thought he was cool, but um, I, I liked Tito Ortiz just from watching some highlight stuff, maybe on like Spike TV when I was pretty like really young. But when I really got into it and started following UFC and, and, you know, getting all the pay-per-views and watching all the fights. Lyoto Machida was my first favorite mm. fighter that I actively like followed and really, uh, really admired. Why him? I did karate and, and he was the karate guy. So I thought it was cool. I, I, I can understand that. Um, why do they call you the bulldozer? Because yeah, it rhymes. That's it. Yeah, that's it, man. Wow. Uh, did, did, as a kid, did they ever call you hoser? No, I mean, some people have said that later. You know, I, I hear that all the time, but no. No, you never got Bozer the Hoser type of thing. I feel like that's just like a natural not, not very for often. kids. No, not right. very often. Okay, well, I won't start it. Uh, well, Tanner, uh, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to have you on. And uh, I wish you the best and uh, continued success. It's been, uh, it's been cool seeing you uh, rise up the ladder in the UFC. Cool, man. Thanks. Appreciate the time. And good luck with the, uh, the shorts as well. <laughs> Thanks. I'm not going to hold my breath for those. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.